You read the title and instinct takes over as you move for the dislike button, but hear me out. Sarah Palmer is usually regarded as one of the most annoying characters in Halo, from her condescending tone in Warzone to her tendency for snark. For the most part, I think Sarah Palmer isn't as annoying as people say, but I can honestly understand how some people find her I'm in charge attitude off-putting in a series where most side characters are submissive to the awesomeness of the player. One line in particular had her placed on a lot of people's hit list. I thought you'd be taller. The argument being that she shouldn't be so dismissive of Chief. She should bow before his greatness. He's the same Spartan who saved humanity multiple times. What if I told you though, that this line may not be as bad as you think and that her character isn't dismissing or disrespecting Chief? I'm not telling you that you're incorrect because obviously how a character makes you feel is entirely subjective. Unless you're a member of Fireteam Osiris in which case you're boring. But I want to explain Palmer from my point of view and why her line and attitude honestly worked for me in the case of Halo 4's campaign. Halo 4's story was polarizing for fans and for good reason. I don't want to dismiss anyone one who didn't like it. As a sequel to Halo 3, it was tonally different and didn't really follow the gung-ho, let's kick ass power fantasy Bungie had going on in the original trilogy. It was very much the difference between Star Wars and Star Trek. While Halo 4's story may have been much more complex, it doesn't mean that the original trilogy had a stupid story by comparison. Bungie wasn't aiming for highly complex storytelling, it was just about making sure you the player were participating in an adventure that would have you walk out as the savior of the galaxy. It was a story tailored to make you as amazing and empowered as possible. Both the original trilogy and Halo 4 had two very different goals, and I feel that both accomplished their goals excellently. Halo 4's goal was to flip the power fantasy on its head and also include a subtle commentary on the Halo series and Master Chief's video game character as a whole. When Halo 4 released, Chief woke up to a new galaxy as well as a new age of gaming. Back in 2007, when Chief's character entered cryosleep, it was sort of the end of the era of AAA games being more about explosions and power fantasies, and video games began transitioning to more complex storytelling with characters who didn't just serve as vehicles for a power fantasy. Master Chief was kind of the last of the big buff badass video game heroes, and so with his return in 2012, Halo 4 told a very different type of story that showed how Chief's style of character was viewed as outdated. Halo 4's story was essentially the plot of Halo CE, but with the goal of depowering the player and breaking the Chief down as opposed to building him up. You start the game like a traditional Halo, kicking ass, taking names, but starting with Cortana's decaying mental health, the game stops trying to build you up. One bad thing happens after another until finally, when you see that the UNSC has arrived, you get to the crashed infinity and eagerly await the door to open and show familiar marines in awe of your legacy, the power fantasy restored. Instead, Chief is greeted by dozens of colorless, bland Master Chiefs, and one of them even steps out without a helmet on, revealing a normal face. And the first thing she does is quip at him, showing that everyday people, Marines, are now becoming Chief. He's no longer special. Seal her up! Thought you'd be taller. This line and Chief's further treatment by Del Rio has multiple meanings, some of which I think that the community overlooks because they take it so literally, without exploring the undertones and the message that it sends. First of all, the line shows us that the gung-ho marines of old are now becoming Spartans themselves. Palmer's line wasn't meant to offend Chief or disrespect him. It's just friendly teasing that you see between fellow soldiers. Secondly, the line demonstrates on a narrative level how the UNSC and Oni have begun to move on from Chief and have begun to make their own Spartans and just forgetting everything he fought for in a twisted spin on how Chief is usually loved and revered. 
As the story progressed, we could see tensions between Del Rio and Chief heating up until the infamous No Sir scene, where Chief made the call to defy Del Rio to save humanity. Give me that chip. The didact has to be stopped. If you won't do that, I will. I am ordering you to surrender that AI! No, sir. Lieutenant! Arrest that man! Captain! Arrest him! Captain! Get word to Earth that trouble is coming. Cortana and I will do what we can back here. As Del Rio is screaming at everyone to arrest Chief, we see Palmer and the bridge crew willingly ignoring orders. They respect Chief. The UNSC may be moving on without Chief, but there are still those within it that look up to Chief, including Palmer. People mistake Palmer's quip as disrespect, when in reality it's just banter between fellow soldiers. She's teasing Chief because last time he was around, he was the only Spartan you ever saw. Now there are hundreds of Spartans, which I do think lends to another discussion entirely in the way that Chief has been commercialized in the Halo universe to push Marines to enter the Spartan program and this creepy trivialization by Oni of everything that Chief went through, but that's a topic for another video, honestly. This is all just one person's interpretation of the scene, and honestly, there are other ways to interpret it. I feel that most of the dissatisfaction with her character comes from the way she was handled outside of Halo Force campaign. In Spartan Ops, Palmer was just used to bark orders in the already repetitive missions, and while I agree with her about Halsey being this just monster, they laid in a bit too much with the screw Halsey attitude. Halo Escalation attempted to sloppily conclude her hatred of Halsey, probably in response to the fan backlash, and in Halo 5's campaign, she essentially does nothing outside of risk her life to help Osiris get on the giant space owl. It's funny to see her character so neutered and held down with tape over her mouth in Halo 5's campaign, probably due to the fan backlash to her character. Sometimes when it comes to certain characters, I like to see what maybe the writers are intending, because sometimes the execution may be sloppy, but the ideas are good, which is a problem that I actually do think affects most of Fireteam Osiris as well as Sarah Palmer. Another thing that I think is funny is Palmer in Halo 4's campaign is a redhead, while well, in all other media, she has dark brown hair, so it's sort of like this weird Jekyll and Hyde situation. Annoying Sarah Palmer has dark hair, while cool chill Palmer has red hair. I don't know, it's just something that I noticed and, you know, I thought I'd share with you guys because I found it interesting. And so those are some of my thoughts on Sarah Palmer. Honestly, I think her issue is just poor execution more than being a poor character. I really don't mind her, although don't use her in Warzone. Please left, let Jeff Steitzer do that. He's the Halo announcer. Warzone. Lock and load. Guys, PAX West is approaching, and I will be attending, which is actually pretty exciting. So hopefully I'll be able to meet some subscribers and just some other cool people. I'm also currently working on actually getting myself a late night gaming t-shirt to wear in public so that people can recognize me when I'm out and about. Also, due to multiple requests, I have finally made a Patreon page. I'm still figuring things out. I don't exactly know how to manage it yet. I'm new to the whole Patreon thing, but essentially I will begin uploading a podcast to the Patreon page for people who do pledge money. The reason for the Patreon page is that it helps free me up a bit to make more YouTube videos so that I don't need to worry about YouTube constantly cutting my revenue, which forces me to work more in the real world, taking away time from you know, making YouTube videos. All you guys need to do is donate one or two bucks a month. Honestly, nothing big. I'm still new to all this, you know, but it's a learning experience. 
My next video, I want you guys to have a say in. So here are going to be a couple of topics we can discuss going forward. We can talk about Star Wars Battlefront 2, anything ranging from the campaign to the microtransactions in the multiplayer to the game itself and how respectful it is of the Battlefront license and the Battlefront series as a whole. We can talk about Call of Duty World War 2's Nazi Zombies mode, which actually has me and other people pretty excited. And then we could probably even talk about player Unknown's Battlegrounds, a game some of you probably have heard of, not really sure why people like it, and maybe discuss the popularity of it, the game, the way that the game works and why people find it so addictive. So I'm going to let you guys talk about this in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys on the next video.